Hey you guys, Peacemaker here. Ready for your daily bread? Uh, today it's about seeking, and specifically seeking God. I'd be amiss if I didn't point you to Jesus, so... <clears throat> we need to seek Jesus. Those who know us, those who, of us who know Him, and those who do not know Him, and those are two separate groups. And if you've never repented and believed in Jesus Christ's message, that He is the only salvation, sent of the Father, witnessed by the Holy Spirit, then you don't know Him, and you need to. So today is going to be about seeking, and I found some pretty interesting, cool things, guys. So hopefully I'm going to try to figure this out, but I think I figured out how to do the uh, the scriptures better for you so that you guys can read them easier, because I was watching my own video, I was like, I got to turn this thing sideways, and it don't work, and then it flips the screen on me, and I'm like, oh, man. So I think I figured it out, guys, all right? <clears throat> So, as usual, I think there were 310 references in the, in the Bible of seeking. So, that's and all references. The first use of seeking, interestingly enough, is Genesis 37. So, guys, let's just dive in. Father, I pray you bless the people that hear this. I pray that your will would be done on this earth. That we seek the kingdom of God and everything else will fall in place. In Jesus' name. So here in it, hopefully it doesn't just cut the video off. All right, hey, look at that. You could like see it or something. Genesis 37, 14 to 16. This is the first use. Then he said to him, please <clears throat> go and see if it is well with your brothers. This is Jacob speaking to Joseph. And, wi uh, and well with the flocks and bring back word to me. So Joseph went out to the valley of Hebron and he went to Shechem. And now came a certain man found him. Hmm. And there he was, wandering in the field, and the man asked him, saying, What are you seeking? So he said, I am seeking my brothers. Please tell me where they are, feeding my, their flocks. How is he going to know whose brothers? Like, what? There's something interesting going on here. A lot of people think this is a pre-incarnate Jesus showing up again um, as a man, just a random man, like Jacob, right? His father, who wrestles a man. That's not just a man, because Hosea tells you in, about the reference to Jacob wrestling with God. It's God-man. So in Christ Jesus, <laughs> we have that. So I think it was <coughs> Jubilees as well, also confirms that they think this is a, which is not scripture, but confirms this is possibly a witness of Jesus. <coughs> and that's the first time we see him asking, what are you seeking, right? So I'm going to flip it back through a ton of references. Sorry about that, but let's give you, you can go back and look it up, okay? First Chronicles 16, 11, seek the Lord and, and his strength. Seek his face forevermore. First Chronicles 22, 19, set, now set your heart and your soul to seek the Lord your God. Therefore arise and build a sanctuary of the Lord God to bring the Ark of the Covenant of the whole Lord. Oops, sorry, that's my bad. Of the Lord and the holy articles of God into the house. Uh, that is to be built in the name of the Lord. First Chronicles 28, 8 to 10. Now, therefore, in the sight of all Israel and the assembly of God and in the, hearing of our, in the hearing of our God, be careful to seek out the commandments of the Lord your God that you may possess this good land and leave, in, leave it as an inheritance to your children after you forever, forever for the children of Israel, not the Mohammedans, as for you, my son Solitin, Solomon, excuse me, Solitin, what? Who's Solitin? Know the Lord your God and serve him with a loyal heart and a willing mind. For the Lord searches, searches all hearts and understands all the intents of the thoughts. If you seek him, he will be found by you. But if you forsake him, he will cast you off forever. Consider now, for the Lord has chosen you to build a sanctuary. Be strong and do it. <laughs> Second Chronicles seven fourteen. If my people who are hum, hum, or who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. Notice how judgment or not comes from the church, from his people. So Second Chronicles, and obviously in context, Israel there, but no. Second Chronicles eleven sixteen. After the, Levi, uh, after the Levites left, those from the tribes, 
from all the tribes of Israel, such as set their heart to seek the Lord God of Israel, came to Jerusalem to sacrifice to the Lord God of their fathers. And he did evil in the sight of the Lord. Second uh, Chronicles twelve fourteen. sorry. And he did evil because he did not prepare his heart to seek the Lord. We're talking about a king, right? So now we're getting into different references that are going to be more applicable and understandable, I guess. Psalm 14, 2, the Lord looks down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there are any who seek, any who understand who seek God. It's kind of a retort because the next verse says that there are none. Um, and my Calvinist brothers like to go ham on that, but I don't think it means what you think it means. All right, Psalm 27, 4, one thing I've desired of the Lord, that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord, to inquire in his temple. This is David. Verse 8 of that same chapter says, when you said, seek my face, my heart said to you, your, your face, Lord, I will seek. That's David's heart. That's why he's a man after God's own heart even though he did heinous and stupid evil things, like me. Psalm 40, verse 16. Let those who seek you rejoice and be glad in you. Let such as love your salvation continually say, The Lord be magnified. The Lord become more visible in my life and in our, our nation and in the world in Jesus' mighty name. Psalm 53, verse 2 says, God looks down from heaven upon the children of men to see if there's any who understand, any who, who seek God. That's a kind of a reiteration of 14. Isaiah 26, 9. With, who, with my soul I have desired you in the night. Yes, by my spirit within me I will seek you early. For your judgments are in the earth. The inhabitants of the world learn righteousness. <clears throat> And this is what kind of brings me to the topic of the video, I guess, is the timing of seeking him. We don't have forever. Isaiah 55, verse 6, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Um, really quick. Um, we don't have forever, guys. Mike, my friend, was saying that as well. There's an imminent return of Jesus Christ, and there's a rapture to happen before it, I believe. So that's where I stand. Um, I don't see God being just in other ways. So, how should we live? Are there people you care about who don't know Jesus? That's why I'm doing this. So the words of our... are saying Matthew 7-7. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. So even our Lord is saying, you must need the knowledge of God. Acts 17, 27, Paul says, So there, <clears throat> so that we sh they, meaning the children of men, should seek the Lord in, ho in the hope that they might grope for him and find him, like in the dark, though he is not far from each one of us. And a couple more lastly here, and then a couple closing, closing thoughts. But without faith, it is impossible to please God. For he who comes to God must believe that God is, and that God is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. That's witnessing to right now, Barry. I, I wish you could hear that and understand that, because he doesn't, and... The only way to change that is start reading in Matthew. Just keep going. That's what I did. And it changed my life. I now know Jesus. I now have repented and believed and have the risen spirit of the living God in me. To do his will. To be okay. If you're not whole today, I, I, I beg of you to seek the Lord your God in Jesus' mighty name. Sorry it's going long, guys, but it's a lot of scripture, so obviously. One, a couple other things, really quick. Um, one is actually about, like, a really gut check, John three, James 3.16. <clears throat> or, for where there is envy and self-seeking, confusion and every evil thing are. So that was another thing, self-seeking, right? Seek, 
Man, what a hard-hitting verse. If you know John 3.16, you should know James 3.16. Whew, man. There's so many people who are just out for themselves and will not yield to anybody for anything. And it's like, no. No, honey, that's that's not what Jesus wants for your life or for anyone around you. So <laughs> that was a gut check, as always. And then another thing of stuff about Revelation. So in those days, men will seek death and will not find it. They will desire it and to die, and they will death will flee from them. Trust me, honey, you don't want to, you do not want to be here for that. If you're here for that, you were not saved, and that's not God's will. That's why there's a rapture. A harpazo in Greek, a catching up, a picking up, moving away. So rapturo, I believe, in Greek, in Latin, where we get the word rapture from. It's in the Bible. Quit trying to argue otherwise. When and where is the only question. And I definitely give grace to anyone who wants to believe differently than me, as you should too. All right, guys. Sorry it was a pretty heavily contented one. But I hope it blesses you. In Jesus' mighty name, God go with you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord Make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. See, I'm not messing it up today. The Lord lift his countenance even at the pride. I almost forgot. The Lord lift up his countenance and give you peace.